We've seen massive LED walls for virtual production before, but a wall so big that can fit an airplane in it? <laughs> Two months ago, this article showcased Nant Studios' biggest and newest creation, their Melbourne stage, the largest LED volume in the world. The stage itself is 25,000 square feet, featuring 6,000 LED panels stacked 40 feet high, running 289 feet across. Just comparing the numbers here, yeah, it could fit a 737 inside of it. Just look at how little this guy looks in the promo video. Now, the question remains, and yeah, you guessed it, is bigger, better? So here's the team. So the Copilot team hasn't been to this behemoth in person, but we have been to some major LED volumes and some small indie stages. So which size works best? Small LED walls have some serious upsides. They're more affordable, which means you won't have the constant pressure of needing major productions to pay it off. The setup is much more simple. Anything under 16 feet can be rigged using ground support, which is much cheaper than getting an engineer to do a custom rigging for your massive LED screen. They're much easier to transport. Unlike big LED walls, which avoid leaving the studio, if you've got a small wall, you can actually take it on the road if needed. Much more flexible for rental options. And four, it still does what it's supposed to. Realistic lighting, live rendered environments. It's an LED wall, it's just smaller. That being said, it's not all positive. Because of its small size, it limits your shooting capabilities, it limits which lenses you can use to shoot on that wall, and it forces your talent to perform in a precise area. Because it's a smaller screen, you're gonna have to shoot closer to the wall, which could increase the problem of more. You might shoot outside of the wall's limitations, which brings in more post-production work that you didn't wanna do in the first place. So why limit yourself? Why not just go big as you can? It gives you the most immersive environments, the most real looking shots, and allows for a wide range of camera movements. You can basically shoot as wide as you want to. Now that all sounds good, but if a small LED wall is expensive, a large LED wall can cost a small fortune. And that's just the LED wall. You still have to power the damn thing and you have to maintain it. You've also got to deal with setup requirements, certified rigging points for anything over 16 feet tall, more power consumption and more processors. Basically more moving parts equals more points of potential failure. And because of those massive price tags, you have to charge massive prices for people to use your volume. Rates going from 25 to $100,000 a day. Not friendly to the budgets of small productions. Wait, $25,000? It's 100,000? Doesn't that mean you have to book like every single day of the year? Ugh, I better talk to an expert. Okay, I have a giant screen. It's gonna take vast amounts of power to operate, but I'm gonna have to pay some out. It's gonna take a lot of air conditioning to keep the room from getting too warm. There is no one size fits all. The best way to have a successful stage is to very carefully analyze not just the technical requirements and the workflow requirements, but what sort of daily rate that equals. These are the kind of boring mundane factors, but if you don't think about them, you, you could wind up with a stage that, you know, essentially has to be rented at a Tom Cruise movie rate every day for 10 years just to be, you know, profitable. So maybe bigger isn't always better. And just building a big studio to build a big studio could lead to some serious problems down the line. And I'm not saying that's what Nant did. Nant built their studio for a purpose. So the government came in and said they want a production spectacle, and Nant has also partnered with Epic, so that they've got longer plans there down the line. But that's just it. Whatever your studio size, it has to be purpose-built. If you build a monstrous studio for a single production, is another production gonna come through that needs the same size and same specifications? Or is it better to be versatile, to have something that can work for small productions and larger productions, but you can break it down and move it to other studios if you need? So. In terms of size, maybe bigger isn't always better. It might just be how you use it.